Okay, now I'm working on lab 21, part 3.2. So we are building a CMOS inverter. And so in addition to the NMOS, the N-channel MOSFET, we add a P-channel MOSFET. This looks like a push-pull. It's actually an upside-down version of a push-pull because notice that instead of the two sources or the two emitters being next to each other in a push-pull, instead the two drains which are kind of like the two collectors, are next to each other. And also, in a push-pull, the N-channel MOSFET would be on top, but instead the N-channel MOSFET is on the bottom. So remember that, it's tricky. It's actually upside down from a push-pull. Anyway, so we have the two gates connected together. We have the two drains connected together. So the input is at the gates, and the output is at the drains. And basically, if the input is high, then the NMOS transistor is on. So you get a low resistance path between the output and ground. And meanwhile, this PMOS transistor is off. If the gates are high, then... Oh, oh that was high. Sorry, the input was high. If the input is low, then uh, the NMOS transistor is off, but the PMOS transistor is on. So you get a low resistance connection between the output and plus five. So you get either a, a, a low impedance connection to plus five if the input is low, or a low impedance connection to minus five if the input, sorry, to zero. Low impedance connection to ground if the input is high. Okay. Uh, remember the pins are ground, <laughs> pins are gate drain, source, GDS, gate drain source, when you're looking at the text on the front of one of these things. So if you're looking at it like this, so you can read the text, that's gate drain source. And uh, the way I wired it up on my breadboard is I left the NMOS FET where it was, gate drain source, but then when I put in the PMOS FET, I put it upside down. So it's source strain gate, just because I put it upside down, that way the two gates are in the same column on the breadboard. So you can see the two gates are connected together in the same column of the breadboard. So the PMOS is here on the left, the NMOS is here on the right. The two gates are sharing the same column. Then the source of the NMOS Whoops, let me switch hands. The source of the NMOS is wired to ground with this black wire. The source of the PMOS is wired to plus five volts with this red wire. Uh, then the two drains are connected to each other with this yellow wire. Uh, and then the drains also form the output. So I'm observing the output with this blue probe, which is the oscilloscope channel 2 probe, I'm observing the input, which is the gates, with this orange wire, which is channel 1 of the analog discovery 2 oscilloscope. And then the signal source is this yellow wire, it's going to the same place as the orange wire, it's going to the, the two gates. And then what you have here on the screen is actually exactly what we were looking at at the end of the previous video. So it's actually pretty high speed. This is 20 kilohertz. And notice that even at 20 kilohertz, we're doing a pretty good job here. So we have the input in yellow and the output in blue. You can see the little blip when, well, actually, I think this little blip is when the MOSFET first turns on, but I can't say that for certain. Okay, then let's try going a little faster. So let's go, instead of 20 kilohertz, let's go to 100 kilohertz. And then we'll go back over here and we'll zoom in a little bit in time. Still looks decent, not perfect, but decent. Yeah, I think this is the plateau that we saw the other day when the MOSFET first turns on. This is the so-called gate plateau or the Miller plateau. But anyway, the output looks good. Uh, we can even go a little bit faster. Let's go, oh, I don't know. Let's try 500 kilohertz and see what that looks like. Scope. Eh, okay. 
So actually the input looks pretty terrible, but the output still looks decent. So if we go down to, yeah, whoops, that's not very good. Let's zoom out a little bit. And also let me get a better trigger. Yeah, so the input looks pretty poor. Uh, but actually I guess we do get up above threshold just barely. We, I think we hang out a little while at threshold and the output Oh no, actually the output doesn't look all that great because we never really get all the way down to zero. So let's say uh, it, it doesn't really work at this frequency. So we'll go back, that was 500 kilohertz. Let's go to 200 kilohertz and see how we do. So then we'll zoom out just a little bit. That's, uh, that's all right, yeah. So it's not too bad, it's kind of just a little marginal at 200 kilohertz. We'll go back to 100 kilohertz. And, whoops. That's pretty decent. Yeah, I would say at 100 kilohertz, it's pretty decent. So you can see, I guess it's a decent argument that CMOS logic is faster than NMOS logic because it's fast going, uh, it's fast both when the output is going from high to low and when the output is going from low to high because you have a, a low impedance connection either to zero when the output is low or a low impedance connection to plus five when the output is high. So uh, CMOS is used in nearly all logic these days. Complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Complementary because you're using a complementary pair of an NMOS and a PMOS transistor together cooperating.